hold off about a minute. Okay, we're, we're ready now to start our, um, our interviews with the uh, student athletes from Creighton. We had from left to right, senior Marcus Foster, junior Kyrie Thomas, senior Toby Hegner, and senior Tyler Clement. We'll have 15 minutes. Please raise your hand. Let us know who you are, who you're with. Let us get the uh, handheld mics to you. And uh, if you could, if you're asking, uh, address a specific question to one of the student athletes. First question to our right. David Smale, Topeka Capital Journal. Marcus, I know you've probably talked a lot about it. Extra motivation facing Kansas State, and as a follow-up, how did your two years in Manhattan affect the way you are as a player and as a man now? Um, it really just made me learn. You know, I, things I went through, I had to grow up and mature, and now I'm in the spot now. I'm a, I'm the man I wanted to become, and you know, it was just a little learning curve I had to go through. You know, everybody has to go through things, but you face adversity and you get over it and move on. Oh, uh, extra motivation for me is that this could be my last game. You know, there's no any other way I can put it. Is you know I have to put everything on the line so I can be able to play till till it's all over. To our right, <clears throat> Sam Blum from the Daily Progress. Marcus, I'm curious if uh, you've had any relationship with Nigel Johnson. I know he's also, you know, kind of playing here, and if you guys have spoken or you know plan to speak at all. Um, yeah, me and Nigel talked the night uh, we found out that there was a possibility that we could play each other. And yeah, that was my roommate for my two years at Kansas State. So me and him are very close and we, we've been talking throughout the year. So, you know, me and him are definitely excited to, you know, be able to play each other, you know, on different teams this time. Back left. Hi, Gabe Fernandez, Sporting News. Uh, obviously, you know, you can't reveal specific like tactics or plays and whatnot, but has what does coach exactly uh, helped emphasize in practice, like even anecdotally, to prepare you for this uh, upcoming matchup? Um, you know, just kind of same things we've been going through the same over, over and over this season. Um, you know, we struggle on the defensive end, and teams are going to try to punk us. And, you know, you watch Kansas State play, and that's what they're really good at. They're good at stopping teams and being tougher than teams. So he just emphasized we have to bring a whole nother level of toughness, uh, you know, try to keep them out the paint a little bit. You know, they are, some, they are good shooters, so we have to be able to contain the three-point line and also keep them out the paint. Kyrie, you want to? Oh, uh, kind of. Marcus kind of really just put you know everything out there on the line. Just really uh, focus on that level of toughness to match theirs or be uh, a little better than theirs. Um, that's one thing, and um, really just uh, getting those guys a little frustrated with whether we trap or whether you know our game plan is. Uh, just really to uh, you know kind of get in their heads a little bit because I know they're going to do the same to us. But at the same time, you know, maintain you know our focus, but to get them riled up and cause those turnovers, uh, which will eventually lead us to our you know our game, which is a fast pace and knocking down threes. Middle of the room. Can you hear me, Marcus? Um, what was your um, reaction when you found out you were going to play K State? Where you just, was it kind of a, a roll of the eyes, or was it anybody but them? Or what, what was your reaction when that happened? Um, it was kind of different, you know. I mean, I was just happy for our name to be called, but, you know, I just wasn't expecting to play them, you know. And I knew coming in there was going to be a lot of media attention towards it, and, you know, that's the one thing I wanted to stay away from just because, you know, I'm so locked into, you know, this last game that I have to play, and I want to be at my best, and I don't want to have to worry about other things rather than just going out there and giving them my all. Back of the room. Uh, Brendan. Brendan Marks, Charlotte Observer. I guess this is for any of you guys. Uh, when you found out that you were coming to Charlotte, what was the reaction from Davion and Tyshawn? What did they guys? What did they tell you about Charlotte? Toby. Well, they uh, 
they definitely were really excited, and uh, we weren't. We were just as excited for them as, uh, you know, going back to we're in the tournament, and we were all excited at the moment. But it meant a little bit more to them to come home and play in front of some of their friends and family. So uh, they were they were pretty excited. It was a pretty good feeling to to witness that. Back of the room in front of me, Nick Cox with Cox Sports Broadcasting. This is for any of the the players. Uh, every team's goal at the beginning of the year is to make it to the big dance. Now, what's your feelings now that you're in the big dance with a chance to play the national championship? Tyler. Yeah, I mean, like you said, that was one of our main goals coming into the season was getting back to the tournament. And uh, we've talked a lot about how we've gotten to the tournament five of seven years, but we're not necessarily happy just to be here anymore. We want to make some noise and win a couple games for sure. And so um, I guess our whole sentiment is that, you know, we're, we're, while we're happy we're here, we're not just happy we're satisfied with that. We want to keep rolling and, you know, keep extending our season. So we're trying to make some noise. Toby? Um, well, the big thing for this team, and uh, especially us four sitting up here today, is uh, no Creighton team has ever made it past the first and second round. So our goal going into the season was to was to make a run, like Tyler said earlier, um, and that's something that we can do. Um, but we got to take it one game at a time. And uh, right now, our focus is on K State and what we have to do uh, to win that game. Kyrie, your turn. Uh, yeah, Toby just you know hit it right on the nail. Uh, not just to be here and you know get past that first and second round. Uh, you know we. Did it, did it last year, kind of got overwhelmed and uh, looked past the Rhode Island game. And, you know, unfortunately, we lost the first round. So uh, to get past, you know, the first and second round would, would mean a lot to us. Marcus? Um, yeah, all year we talked about how we can, you know, exceed our expectations. And, you know, at the beginning of the season, we weren't the team we were supposed to be. And a lot of people doubted us. And over, over the season, we got better and better. And the more we started talking about the tournament, we we were like, you know, we're just not going to be happy to be in there. We're going to, you know, try to make some noise, like Tyler said. And, you know, we want to leave our mark on our school and by making history, by making it to Sweet 16. But we got to take it one game at a time, unlike we did last year. Back of the room. Um, uh, Toby, in watching film of Dean Wade, what exactly do you see from him? Give me your breakdown of Dean. Um, Dean's a, an, an, a great player. I mean, uh, you, you ask anybody in the Big 12, and they'll tell you that uh, he can do it on both ends of the floor. Um, uh, one of our focuses at, uh, is his post-up game and, and transition is, is very, very good. And um, we're going to have to do whatever it takes to uh, keep the ball out of his hands and uh, make someone else uh, put it on the floor and score. So. Uh, We've got a lot of things on our mind uh, to take Dean Wade out of the game, but um, it just it doesn't it's it's going to be a team effort no matter no matter the situation, and uh, that's what we prepared. Who has the next question? Anyone else? Who we let him go? Back left. What's been the top song in the tournament uh, playlist rotation that's been going on in the locker room just for anybody on the? Uh, Martine's been playing the middle. I don't know who that sings that, but we're getting kind of sick of it because he keeps singing it all the time. Uh, we don't really have a song right now, I guess. That's kind of fueling us, but we're tired of the middle. God's plan, maybe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of different songs that are going through the going through our locker room right now. Anyone else? Okay, thanks guys. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Thank you guys. Coach McDermott at three.
ready, we're ready to start with Coach uh, McDermott from Creighton. Well, we're, uh, we're, we're thrilled to be back in the NCAA tournament. Um, you know, this is the second year in a row that we've had a pretty s serious injury to one of our key guys that has ended his season and had to figure out a way to rally around that. And I'm really proud of the way this team has functioned since we lost Martin Krampel. Um, guys have had to play different roles. Uh, we've had to have some guys step up. Uh, even a red shirt that wasn't playing that had the red shirt pulled and Jacob Epperson. So, uh, you know, we had to kind of reinvent ourselves after that injury and it, it took a little time, but uh, we certainly have moved the right direction and, and uh, extremely proud of those four guys you just talked to because their leadership has been critical uh, in us sitting here today. Questions again, raise your hand, let us know who you are, who you're with, and let us make sure we get the handheld mic to you. First question to our right. David Smale, Topeka Capital Journal. Marcus answered the question the way you would hope he would, that it's just another game, it's an NCAA tournament game, all the pressure is on survive in advance. Do you sense that there's any extra with him because he played at K-State? You know, it wasn't probably his top choice of who he'd like to play uh, when the pairings came out. Uh, but he and I have had a, you know, because we're playing K-State, it, it gave us an opportunity this week to have a lot of conversation um, about it. And, you know, I, I don't know how Marcus answered your questions, but in, in my conversations with him, you know, we all make mistakes when we're 18, 19 years old. And he's taken ownership of those mistakes. And to his credit, uh, he's made the changes in his life uh, to be the person that he is today and be the leader and the teammate that he is today. And that may or may not have happened had he not made those mistakes when he was 18 and 19. So while I'm very proud of what the stat sheet says about Marcus Foster this year, uh, that doesn't hold a candle to how proud I am of, of who he's become off the court, uh, the friend, the teammate, uh, the father uh, that he is today is a very different person than the one that first met with me when he left Kansas State. And that's why I do this. That's what Bruce does it. And, uh, you know, to see guys grow and, and hopefully move on to bigger and better things in their life. And, and the combination of the two experiences have, has led him down this path and uh, in the landing spot that he is today. So I'm extremely proud of him. To our left on the aisle. Brian Mull from the Fieldhouse. Uh, Greg, what adjustments, if any, have you made in preparation leading up to this week? Things maybe you've gathered from your last couple of experiences here? You know, we've had a little more time. Uh, last year, we played in the finals of the Big East Tournament on Saturday, and you turned around on Tuesday and jumped on a plane for the West Coast. So we've had a little more time um, to really get our legs under us. So I think from that standpoint, I think we're a fresher team than we were a year ago. Uh, but we've had enough guys that have been here and they've done a really good job throughout the season uh, in helping our freshmen uh, move along when we really needed them. And they've done that this week in helping prepare them for what's ahead this week. And, and it's the biggest stage in college basketball. Uh, but at the end of the day, you go out and do what you do. And you know, there's not a lot of surprises and secrets that you're going to pull out in the middle of March. You, you try to execute your stuff as well as you can and try to disrupt uh, what the other team's going to do. So, I, I think we're in a good place, and I, I think the guys are really anxious to get out on the floor tomorrow night. Back of the room on the aisle. Tim Fitzgerald, GoParacat.com. Uh, Coach, when I say Dean Wade, what do you think? I like the vision of him with the boot on instead of the boot off. Uh, now, honestly, I hope, he's, I hope he's healthy and he's able to play. But I had a chance to watch Dean in high school, and we recruited him a little bit, uh, but probably were too late, and he, he, he committed to K-State shortly thereafter. Um, but his development since uh, I saw him in high school is really incredible. And I've seen him play a little over the course of his career, but obviously I haven't studied him like I have this week. But, you know, he shoots a three-point shot extremely well. You know, he can beat you on the block. He's got great pace to his game when he catches it on the block. But he can also catch it off the block and, and face you or back you down. And 
Having said all that, what makes him dangerous is his ability to pass the ball if you attempt to come with some help. He can make some of those other guys very, very efficient, very, very effective with his ability to pass the basketball. So I've been incredibly impressed with him. Uh, I, think he's, I think he's a really good player. I think he's got a bright future ahead after college. To our right on the aisle. Mac, I guess, in, just going back to the freshmen a little bit, you know, they've had two kind of big stages away from home that they've had to play well against, and then obviously the Villanova one at home. What about those three players, you know, gives you the confidence that to extend their minutes, extend the rotations in big situations when you need, you know, important play from your team? Well, number one, they've earned it um, and with their play on the practice floor. Even when they weren't, when, when Mitch and Tyshawn weren't shooting at great in games, they continued to shoot it in practice, and they continued to spend the time off the practice floor uh, preparing themselves. And I had lunch with those three the other day, and you know, one of the things I talked about and actually thanked them for is, you know, they've all had to play a role different than probably what they anticipated. You know, Tyshawn really got thrust into the point guard role because of Caleb's injuries, and he did a good job, so we left him there. But that's not his true position. Ronnie Rell goes down late in the year uh, when we're playing the three most important games of the year to try to get into this tournament. And we slide Mitch Ballack full time to the power forward position, a position he really never played um, except for a few minutes with us early in the season. And then Jacob Epperson was going to redshirt, you know, and he's sitting there in the middle of January just icing his knee, taking his time before he gets back to the practice floor after the meniscus surgery. And all of a sudden on January 27th, he gets thrown to the Wolves uh, because of Martin's injury. So they've all, it wasn't a typical freshman year because of, we really asked them to get out of their comfort zone and do different things. And if one of them fights us on that or one of them can't embrace the role that we've asked them to play, we're not here today. So, uh, you know, and what made me really think about it is I rewatched the Providence game and you look out there in overtime at the start of overtime and we've got Kyrie and, and Marcus and three freshmen on the floor to start that overtime. So I think that speaks volumes to the progress that they've made. Back to the room. Cox with Cox Sports <coughs> Broadcasting. As a coach, what does it mean to you having your team back in the NCAA tournament? You know, it never gets old. Uh, I've been fortunate to do it quite a few times now, and it's uh, the same level of excitement when your name's called as it was the first time. And you're just as happy for your guys um, because it's, it's so hard to get into this tournament. You know, you, I've watched a few NIT games the, other, the last few days, you know, as you're trying to kill some time and get to, get to the game. And those are really good teams playing. And, you know, you, you can't ever take for granted uh, the fact that you're here because it's it, things have to go right. You need the bounce of the ball some, and you've got to have a pretty good basketball team. And and for that reason, I'm really proud of our team to be here. Who has the next question? Back of the room. Coach, um, as the mentor of Marcus Foster, when you <coughs> saw this pairing. Uh, did you think it was an unfortunate set of circumstances that he has to talk about all this in you know the final weeks of his college career? I would say it would have been unfortunate if he's not prepared to talk about it. Uh, but I think I think it's important that K State fans understand that the person that Marcus Foster was as a freshman, the guy that's hungry to play and that was a great teammate and that was always in the gym. He's back now. And there was a lot of bumps in the road, some, some in Manhattan. And it wasn't always rosy in Omaha for that first year especially. Uh, but because of the fact that he's matured enough that I think he can address it as someone that, that recognizes that you know, a lot of what happened was my fault. And decisions I made put me in this position. And decisions that I've made since then have put me in the position I'm in today. So, you know, because he's grown so much, uh, I think it's healthy for him to have to be able to answer it uh, because he let down some people and, uh, and, and let down his family. And that was one of his motivating factors to get his life back on track. Uh, he's got a wonderful family and, uh, you know, he, he really disappointed them. And now, now they're pretty happy, as you can imagine. 
you you realized, okay, we're going to get through this. You know, you like you said, that first year at Creighton was a little bit of a challenge. Do you remember like a breakthrough when you said, okay, Marcus is going to be fine? You know, I, I don't know if there was ever one particular time, but I, I was seeing, I was seeing constant growth. Sometimes it was very slow. Sometimes it was a little bit more rapid. Um, but just some of the decisions he would make and some of his interactions with his teammates. You know, I, I recruited him out of high school too, so I've known him since he was 15 or 16 years old and knew his family. So I knew what he was like back then. I knew the Marcus Foster that you all saw as a freshman at Kansas State, and I really felt like he was still in there. We just had to bring him back out, and, and with the help of his family, we were able to do that. But he, his decisions got better, uh, and his, you know, I think once he recognized, you know what, I'm in this position and I'm sitting out this year at Creighton because of decisions I made at Kansas State. Uh, once he got, once he grasped that, uh, I think he was able to move forward quicker. Back to the room again. Uh, the first time you spoke to Bruce, and I imagine you spoke to Bruce when uh, you were talking about taking on Marcus. Do you remember what that conversation was about, what Bruce said about Marcus and, and where they were at? I remember exactly the conversation, but I'm not going to discuss it in this room. Bruce, Bruce was very honest and upfront and open, like I would be if the shoe was on the other foot and he called me. Um, uh, he, he, he let me know exactly what I was dealing with, and I appreciated that, and we moved on after that. Other questions? Okay, thank you, Coach. Thank you. with Virginia's Isaiah Wilkins and Devin Hall.
Kansas State is Barry Brown Jr. and Dean Wade. Jordan Grant, Jarius Lyles, Joe Sherburn, and KJ Morrow. Jordan Grant, Jordan Grant, Jarius Lyles. Correct. And that's it. Chris. We'll be starting in a minute or two with the student athletes from Virginia, Isaiah Wilkins and Devin Hall.
We are about to start. All right, we welcome senior, Virginia seniors Isaiah Wilkins and Devin Hall. We have 15 minutes. Please raise your hand. Let us know who you are, who you're with, and uh, please wait for the handheld mic. First question, back right. Nick Cox with Cox Sports Broadcasting. You're the number one team in the country, the number one seed in the tournament. Does that put additional pressure on you, or do you look at it more as respect? Um, I mean, I think all, that, all the unnecessary pressures are you guys make those. Um, we just try to get better every single day. Uh, coach preaches that, so I'm not really worried about the pressures or the, the targets on our back. We know the team's going to come after us, so we just got to be ready. Isaiah? Um, I, I, I think he, he covered most of it, but um, I just think that at this point of year, none of that even matters anymore. Like, if you're here, you won, so it's time to show up and play. Back left. Do you guys, kind of going off what uh, the question I was just asked, but as a number one, are you, would you guys say that there's any added pressure or you're just kind of used to maybe being so highly ranked since you guys have been up there in the rankings throughout the season? Um, I think that was kind of similar to what he was, what he was asking. And um, I, don't, I don't think there's too much added pressure. I think what, what really matters is what we got going on inside our locker room, what we got going on in practice. So um, to you know, add more pressure to ourselves, I don't think is is anything that's going on in, in outside inside our locker room. We just want to get better as a group. Back left. Obviously, it's been beaten to death that you know you your team was picked to finish sixth in the ACC, uh, and clearly that didn't happen. Uh, so, at what point do you think this season was the was the uh, switch flipped that you all realized that you, your team could really not just build something special for a tournament run, but build something special to be the best team in the country? Um, I think that I never thought, or I didn't think that that was our mindset at all. Like we never looked at it and it's like, yeah, let's, let's try to finish six. Like that's where we should be at. We're a confident group and we believe in each other. So, I mean, um, all that, like we said earlier, all that stuff doesn't matter now and it didn't matter before the season to us. So it is what it is at this point. Devin. I agree with him. I don't think um, you know our confidence wavered in, at any point this season, and uh, we knew it was going to be a. I mean, maybe some bumps and bruises, but we uh, we learn as a group every single day. So um, I think that we just had the utmost confidence in ourselves. Second row. Yeah, Isaiah, talk about how how big a surprise was it when you found out the Andre was out, and uh, how much of a blow has it been? Um, well, I mean, we knew that he was playing hurt. Guys knew that. Um, he was struggling a little bit there, even before that game. So um, it was a, a game time decision for, for him, and he decided to play, and it was huge. But you know, it hurts, and we're sad for him. I, I'd like them to be able to play, but at the same time, um, nobody, like nobody else, is going to care that he's hurt. So it's at, at this point, you got to step up, next man up, and we got to be ready to play. So I feel bad for him, but we got ball to play. Are there other questions? To our right, you guys, you guys feel like the style of ball that you play uh, is an advantage in a tournament setting like this. And I'm curious what you think about fans—not obviously not Virginia fans, but fans in general—who kind of feel like it's a less fun style of basketball to watch. Um, I don't think we necessarily have to apologize for the way we play, um, or you know, um, try to be you know favored by every everyone else. If you like us, then you like us. If not, then I mean, so be it. I think that you know the way we play helps us helps us win, and you know we enjoy playing that way. We played it. We played great that way as a, as a group. So I don't think we necessarily have to, you know, uh, make help everybody like us or make everybody like us. It's that's just that's the nature of the beast. Back to the room. It's the dream of every college player to get to play in the NCAA tournament. Tell me, you know, how y'all feel about getting to play? Um, I mean, it's exciting. You want to play ball, and a lot of people come up and watch this as they play, and they want to play on the stage, and so we're here. And thankful for that, for sure. But, um, yeah, excited. Devin? A heck of an experience. Um, I'm looking forward to it, and it should be a lot of fun. Um, uh, like I said, I mean, when you're, I mean, well, like you were saying, when you're younger, you're watching this, and, you know, to be able to play on this stage is, is uh, really fun. Second row. Yeah, this is Doug Daddy again for Isaiah. 
have you done anything different in preparation physically for this tournament uh, or late season as opposed to last year when you obviously missed a game? When I was sick? Uh, no, I eat more vegetables. <laughs> That's it, though. That's all I got for you. I'm healthy this year. Oh, yeah. Back of the room. Guys, uh, having been through this a few times already, when you look back at your previous experiences, how much does it change this time of the year in terms of what you need to do and, and what are the biggest keys in the single elimination kind of format? I think uh, preparation is, is really, really big when it comes to this, you know, because uh, you have one, well, you have a couple of days coming into it to prepare and then. Uh, depending on how you do, you may have one day just to prepare for it. So um, I think that preparation and, you know, film and make sure you're locked in on every aspect is, is big in, the, in, in this setting. Yeah, and I feel like we got to punch first um, or, you know, try to punch first at least. Uh, it's hard to play from behind, especially in this format because everybody's revved up and ready to play. So, bro, is my mic being weird? Do you hear that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Do I need to back it up? You're good. Oh, all right. <laughs> Third ref. Yeah, uh, Kip Coons for the Raleigh News and Observer. Uh, Devin, with DeAndre not available, will you expect to see more time filling that role that he played in that uh, in the small lineup uh, as the nominally the four? Uh, I think maybe so. Um, I think it depending on you know what matchups are in or um, if it if it may be you know be to our advantage, then maybe maybe so I'll play some four or you know um, maybe we may go more traditional traditional at times. So we'll see. I mean I'm. I'm comfortable playing. I played a little bit last year, uh, so you know. I mean, I, I enjoy playing that position anyway. So, anyone else? Oh, we go second row again. Yeah, Devin. Uh, do you guys watch a lot of these games that have been held up to this point? And uh, if so, have you learned anything? What do you mean? What do you mean? The NCAA tournament games oh, that have been played to this point. Oh yeah, oh of course. We're uh, before what game we were just watching Rhode Island and um, uh, Oklahoma. That was a good one. Went in the OT, um, and then we we're just watching the Gonzaga game in uh, in the locker room just now before we walked in here. So um, I mean, these are, this is a competitive nature. Com I mean, this competitive nature. I mean, who who doesn't want to play in this this atmosphere? And I know uh, every player across the country playing in this is uh, excited right now and, and amped up. Yep. Back of the room. You guys have always been a chip on the shoulder kind of team, and the program's sort of been defined by the underdog mentality. How hard is that to maintain when you're a one seed, and do you get a little extra bit of that now with DeAndre out and some doubters kind of creeping in again? I think it's more of us challenging each other in practice, and you know, making sure we keep our you know our humble, our humble mindset going into the game, um, knowing that I mean, at any div any given day we don't come out to play, we can be beat. So um, I think that we have that mindset of knowing that we have to, you know, fight, be continuous, and you know, be relentless. And, and on every possession, it, it definitely helps us keep that underdog, you know, mentality. And I don't think that there was ever a point where we, we got to we beat we won a game or something like that, and we all got together and we're like, yes, like now we have arrived, and we're here. And no, that's not that's not how it goes. So, um, you know, we're, we're getting after it every single day. If if seeding mattered, the tournament wouldn't wouldn't be a thing. So it's, it's whatever. Yeah, I think I think it's just we we most definitely have room to improve, and we're trying to you know try to keep improving every single day. Uh, we watch so much film, and we learn you know uh, from each other, learn from Coach Ben and his staff. So I think the the room for improvement is, is definitely there. Anyone else? Back left. What are some things that you, you two as older players are doing to help, I guess, calm the nerves of some of the younger guys or at least prepare them for what's about to happen over the next couple of days? I don't think that we're a super uptight team anyway. We play around a lot and stuff like that. And we're loose that way. Um, Dev does a really good job of um, like filling the guys with confidence and things like that. But we're still holding each other accountable. It's just still basketball. Um, we're in North Carolina. We played North Carolina before. It's basketball, so show up. I think at the end of the day, uh, when it boils down to it, like it's, like you said, we try to keep the guys loose and you know keep you know confidence within the team. But um, 
at the end of the day, when it boils down to it and the, the nerves get uh, you know settled, then you know it's time to really sit down and play. Anyone else? Okay, thank you, guys. Can I have this? Start with Coach Bennett in around five minutes, 345. Hey, we're about to start with uh, Virginia coach Tony Bennett.
Welcome, Virginia coach Tony Bennett. We'll have about 15 minutes. Remember to raise your hand. Let's get the handheld mics to you. Who has the first question? Up to our right. We'll start to our right. Mm -mm. Go ahead. Again. Just talk loud. I'll hear you. Go. I, I got it, so I can. Yeah. You know, do you kind of anticipate him getting some more minutes um, in this game? Well, I think you know the game will dictate that, and obviously, um, it was really discouraged for DeAndre and for us. He had a heck of a year, and I thought he really developed and you know helped us so much with his versatility, offensively and defensively. We talked a lot about that, but that's um, you can't control the timing; those things happen, and I think there's enough in that room. And of course, as the old saying goes, ever you know, next man up, you step up and. Uh, guys like Marco have to be ready, and just depending upon how the game goes, um, you, you see how it goes. But, but it was, um, yeah, an unfortunate thing, and he seems to be handling it well. And I think the guys, everybody wanted him to be part of this, but um, we're glad he's here, and we're going to have to fight like crazy to, like I said, keep going. Third row on the aisle. Hey, Tony. Uh, Gene Wong with the Washington Post. What do you see Mamadi's role being now that DeAndre is not going to be available? And uh, what do you kind of anticipate from him going forward? Yeah, I think it just, again, the, the game will dictate what you do, whether you're playing more traditional. Um, and then guys like Mamadi and Marco, you mentioned, Nigel, those guys who have come off the bench for us, you know, and DeAndre before, certainly have to be ready. And with the team that we're playing in UMBC, they're a, they spread the floor and they shoot the ball uh, very well. Their foremen can, you know, play almost like a perimeter. So you have to be ready for that. And it'll just be how we're defending and how they're guarding us. So I, I think you can't say until the game gets going. But you're hopeful that uh, the guys like Mamadi and Nigel and Marco will, you know, seize the opportunity. And the guys in the starting lineup will continue on. Second row. Yeah, Tony, Tony seeing as uh, hey, uh, uh, DeAndre hit six free throws in the final minute against Carolina, when did the injury occur? Was it in the Clemson game? Yeah, he, um, well, he had sprained his right wrist. I can't remember when he did that, but that was taped for a while. But in the Clemson game, I think, you know, it was when he went to the basket and then he, he ended up playing. He had x-rays and everything was looking good. And it wasn't until um, when we got back and it still was bothering him. And, and then um, he had an MRI, which was the definitive thing. So I think it's just a real slight um, slight crack, but on his left, correct. And um, you know, your your job as the coach, certainly, and with these young men, is to protect protect them. And he has such a nice future. And um, I think DeAndre would have tried to play, um, but long term, that's not the wise thing. It's to to get this taken care of and do it the right way and give him the best chance for a full recovery, which is certainly what we expect. But um, it was. Uh, I believe it was in that Clemson game, I think, when he, he landed. First row right in front of me. Yeah, Tony, uh, Dan Wolk in USA Today. Um, you know, obviously, you guys have been a number one seed before. You've mm -hmm. been good for a long time. But given the season you've had, how do you assess the opportunity in front of your team going into this tournament? And also, you know, do you need to break through to a Final Four to kind of get rid of maybe the final narratives that hang on to your program? Yeah, I think, um, well, first of all, you know, to, to be given a number one seed is, you know, it's kind of a reflection of the year that we had. And, and that's a, it's an honor, but really what it does is it earns you the right to play one game. And we've earned that right, just as UMBC did. And, and you got to play and earn the right to get a, a next game. Um, but it was a heck of a year, uh, you know, and I think our guys, of course, every program wants to win a national championship get a final four berth, those kinds of things. I was fortunate enough to be with my father when his program at Wisconsin went there, and, and that was a great run. But, um, you know, as far as our program, I'd love it, but I know the way to do that is to lock in and say, all right, earn the right to get to the next game. And there's so many good things that have happened this year that, um, you know, won't be taken away. but. You know how you choose to judge your program. Yeah, I look in our league. You look at the programs like Duke and Carolina and the national championships. They've done that. That's why we're just continuing to try to knock. We always talk. We got a door knocker in our locker room. Just keep knocking, 
and uh, a step at a time. So tremendous opportunity. Certainly, um, we received the opportunity to compete against UMBC. And I think I told our guys maybe a month ago, I mentioned it to our media many times, to not overcomplicate it. Um, just to be clear-minded, don't worry about seedings, how far you go, what happens. Uh, just have a mindset, we're going to improve, we're going to play to win, and you know we're going to be ready to go. And I think that not complicating is the best way for us to have as much success as we can. You are right on the aisle standing up. Tony, Phil Orban from WSOC in Charlotte. Um, we talked about this a few years ago when you guys were playing here, former Charlotte Hornet coming back. What are your memories from, from the city? What's it like coming back? And, and yeah, your, your thoughts on it, it? This has been a, I have wonderful memories of Charlotte. It's where a uh, couple dream came true, uh, dreams come true happened. One, you know, I had a dream as a young boy to one day could I play in the NBA, and I was given that opportunity by, um, by the Hornets. I think Dave Torzik, well, Dave Torzik, maybe he was the one in the war room saying we should draft the, the little lefty from Wisconsin Green Bay, but to play on that Hornets team, to be part of a playoff team and some special, special years here with great, great teammates was a dream come true for me. And then I got to um, meet my wife here. She's not from here. She's from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, but she was an assistant youth director at the church, Forest Hill, that I went to. So, you know, when you meet your wife and you get to play in the NBA, it's more important to meet your wife. Let's get that straight so I don't get in trouble here. That's the first one. Um, but second, those are two pretty awesome things that happened here and um, got to meet wonderful people that um, I was part of this community when the Charlotte Hornets, the, the Hive was alive, the Coliseum was great. So I, I cherish those memories and just, um, again, thankful that uh, where this road's taken me. Middle of the room to the right. Dick Cox with Cox Sports Broadcasting. Tony, a lot of players never get to play in the tournament. A lot of coaches never make it to the tournament. You've done both. What does it mean to you now to, to get to be a coach and bring your team back to the tournament? It's great. Um, when I played at Wisconsin Green Bay, you know, that was such a, you know, could we? We'd have to win our conference tournament and then get the chance to do that. And I remember how exciting that was for our city and our university. Um, and the NCAA tournament is amazing. I mean, the, the regular season championship is, is amazing, the you know, conference tournament, and then the NCAA tournament, so much has been made of it, and rightly so, and I think it's the most exciting sporting events going, a little bias, of course, but to be able to, as a player, do it, and then get the perspective to watch your young men have the excitement and the opportunities to play is great, and then to step into it, you know, and in arenas like this with, um, and it's just gotten more coverage, more excitement is, uh, I think it's wonderful. Let's go back to the room on the aisle. Tony, Brendan Mark, Charlotte Observer. Uh, other than the dramatic way that UMBC sort of made it into the tournament, what have you learned about them from watching the film and, and what are yeah. you expecting tomorrow? Well, I think being uh, Coach Odom, Ryan, being both of us being coaches, sons, um, I think in two years what he's done with that program is terrific, uh, how, how they've played and just I've been really impressed in watching them on tape. They shoot almost 40%, 39% from three. Uh, they shoot 20 plus, make 10, and they spread the floor. Um, their foreman can shoot. Jarius Lyles is a heck of a player. I think he had 31 against Arizona. Um, I, I didn't realize their point guard was defensive player of the year. I can see it because he's quick. They really spread the floor and attack and play hard and are well coached. And that's the thing, you know, um, when I was at Green Bay, we always talked about this. Good basketball knows no limits, knows no divisions. It doesn't matter what conference you're from, what your seating is. Um, good basketball sticks and it shows. And I think for them to go into Vermont and beat them in the ball they've played is, is very good. And that's, again, as I get back to, like we said, you don't overcomplicate it. You try to improve and you play it to win. And, you know, you, you just you prepare well. And you have to prepare well to play a UMBC because of their – uniqueness in their spacing and all of those things run very good offense. Second row. As you may have heard, Ryan Odom is a former UVA ball boy. <laughs> Were you ever a ball boy? I, I was something called, um, my dad was a coach at University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point. And I was what they called a pointer pup. <laughs> so we were, we'd go out at halftime and we'd get to do the ball. Actually, you'll see when we go, not that you guys will watch, but when we go out there to warm up and we do, it, we do a little ball handling routine. You know, it's the Pete Maravich, you pound the ball, you're in a circle, little. The pointer pups would go out there and we'd round the right leg, left leg, dribble it high, dribble it low at halftime. 
in front of the crowd. So it was kind of that. And then a lot of times, you know, I'd sit right behind the bench and did some things for my dad's team. That's when Terry Porter uh, and Brad Soderberg, one of my assistants, not to date Brad here, <laughs> but was playing where they were playing for my father, but a pointer pup. So, and I, yes, no, I know obviously Coach Odom when he was at UVA and, and Ryan was at Virginia Tech and a lot of good places. Right, I'm not sure if you were, um, I wasn't sure if you were using that as an analogy, but do you really have a door knocker back in Virginia? Yeah, and, yeah. Um, no, and, that's and why did you put that there? No, I just ever since I've been coaching, and not to make a big deal out of it, but even at Washington State, um, I, I think we acknowledge that you just, that's the way uh, to touch something special. You just keep knocking, and sometimes the door gets slammed in your face, and sometimes you knock, and it opens an inch, and you try to put your foot in there and your shoulder, and you just keep keep knocking and try to bust through that door. And that that's the mentality. So we had that at Washington State all my years before we go out a door knocker and have it at Virginia just as a symbol. You know, so many programs have different things, and I think it symbolizes. I, as a matter of fact, I get a lot of texts from former players, and it's a lot of times, keep knocking, coach. And um, I think that's a, a great way to describe a program that is, you know, we're trying to be as blue collar as we can, but pursue excellence in the best manner that we know how. And it, it's our way. It's not um, other ways. And wherever that takes us, it takes us. Right aisle again. Tony, as I walked in, you were talking about them offensively, but I'm curious, defensively, um, they seem fairly multiple. Yep. In, in terms of prepping for their defense, what do you see and, and what's allowed them to improve on that end this season? Yeah, well, Ryan's a good coach. And, um, you know, they have some quickness and they can go down the floor and put some pressure on you, whether it's three-quarter court or uh, make it hard for you. And then they played some good zone. And, and again, that's how they can pressure the ball with their, their quickness and their versatility. So you just have to be ready and be sound with the ball. They've turned, uh, I thought they turned the game around against Vermont. They got after it and showed them a few different looks, but very capable. And again, being a coach's son, you have to make your team play defense or your, your dad's disown you. So that's kind of part of one of the rules of being a coach's son. Third row aisle. Yeah, Kip Coons with Rowry News and Observer. Tony, as a shooter from your background, when you look at a, a player like Kyle Guy, uh, first of all, he's had a special year, but secondly, is his release among the fastest that you've ever seen as a player or coach? Del Curry had a pretty quick release when I played with him here, um, really quick. That was just a wrist flip and it was off. And, um, but Kyle has a very quick release, um, quick setup, and sometimes he can even adjust in the air. And he's got live legs. You know, you watch those guys. Joe Harris played for us. He had a quick release. I uh, was fortunate enough to coach Clay Thompson, one of the quickest releases. But Kyle's up there. He really does have a, a real quick release and, and again, a, a good, good footwork and uh, moves hard without the ball. And sometimes he'll, he'll adjust in the air and turn a little bit, which a lot of guys can't. J.J. Reddick could do it. Rip Hamilton. They're just some of those guys you'd watch, and they have that. And he's, you know, Kyle has that kind of footwork and um, ability to get it off that is, you know, at his size is good. And he gets off the floor a little more than you think. If you saw his two dunks in the ACC tournament, you know that. So, Back of the room in the middle. Tony, I know you're a man of strong faith. How has your faith been important in your coaching? Yeah, it's, it's for me, you know, everybody believes what they're going to believe, but that has been uh, my foundation in my life for so long. And it gives me a, a piece and a perspective that really helps me and guides me uh, in terms of how to, how to treat these young men, how to coach, um, how to honor the opportunity that I've been given. Because um, I, I look at being a coach as a tremendous opportunity, as a gift, really, to try to influence young men to be all they can be, obviously, as players, as a team, and sports is, gives you great lessons. But if there's life lessons after, we have some pillars we talk about that are about humility, passion, unity, servanthood that really make, I think, for a great team. But there's some life lessons in there, too. So uh, for me, it's, it's number one in my life. What matters most, without a doubt, then in my relationship with my wife and my family, and then um, the opportunity to be with young men and, and coach. So very thankful to certainly have that as, as my rock. Any other questions? Last two. Front row here. Tony, just to go back to the keep knocking theme, you know, after the Syracuse game, um, I was there in Chicago. You kind of freaked me out with how calm and, you know, you were, you didn't seem to be phased at all by, by what happened there. As you went into that to reform the program, to have the team you have now, I mean, was that just sort of the perspective that you had to take on it was, we knocked once, didn't break it down 
got to go try again? Was that kind of how yeah. you thought of it? Well, yeah, I mean, I think that mentality, and as the gentleman just asked, um, I, my faith helps me in situations like that to see a, a bigger picture and a perspective. Doesn't mean it doesn't sting and you don't want to be there, but um, that's life. You, you're not always going to get what you want, and we were on the doorstep of perhaps advancing. And then you advance, and there's always going to be what's next, what's next. Uh, it's nothing's ever enough. I understand that all these things are going to fade, but but that idea of knocking after that game, we addressed. You know, how can we improve? Every tough defeat, every tough loss. I think brings incredible wisdom. And that's one of our pillars about thankfulness is will you be thankful for what adversity or losing teaches you? And if you're, if you're able to look at it as, as not enjoyable as it is and really glean from it, I think you, you can grow in ways you probably wouldn't grow in success. And of course, after that, you look at things, how to improve your program. And I've been fortunate to have the right kind of guys. This year, no one expected us to be in this spot. But guys just have come together, and they're so connected and so unified. And now we've lost a key player, so we'll have to remain that way and even more so. But that tough loss, yeah, I think it helped. But a lot of these players weren't even a part of that. Devin, right? Um, oh, correct me if I'm wrong. Isaiah, yeah. So, yeah, sorry, yeah, Devin and Isaiah, <laughs> they're going to get mad at me. Um, but um, th those guys, it, this is a different time. It's a different year. And I think that's important to not dwell too much on the past. Last question, far left. Coach. Gabe Fernandez, Sporting News. Uh, as you've seen your team transition from the regular season to the postseason, has there been any particular player that you've seen, maybe behind the scenes in practice, really make a postseason leap? Or do you think it's just kind of con continued a uh, season-long progression for I your think, team? Yeah, I think it's been a season-long progression. I think everybody, what's made this team um, thus far be where they've been at is they've improved in the off season, had really good off seasons with their individual skill development and their weight room stuff. All those things have mattered. And I think collectively that's lifted them up. And um, there's some guys with uncertainty. We were, you know, unproven and they've, they've stepped up well. And, and again, there's been a, a unique chemistry in how they've played. So I think that's continued on and it'll have to obviously keep continuing for sure. Um, but Different guys at different times. You know, DeAndre, when we played at Virginia Tech, he was a catalyst in it. Like, he kind of came on. Mamadi, Jack, different guys. That's been unique about this team, have stepped up um, when, when called upon or when needed. And you can't just put your finger on one guy. Thanks, Coach.
for about two or three minutes from starting at 415 with the uh, student athletes from Kansas State, the Barry Brown Jr. and Dean Wade. And mic check for CBS, CBS mic check, mic check CBS, CBS mic check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, I am. I'm talking on it. Yes, I am. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. CBS mic check, one, two, three, four. Check, check to CBS truck, CBS truck, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Copy, stand by. We're seeing it one sec. We're gonna make sure tape sees it. How are you? Good. Good. You ready? Copy. And press feed, press feed, press feed for a CBS tape. Press T for CBS tape. One, two, three, four, five. Press feed, press feed, press feed. One, two, three, four, five. Press, 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 press for CBS, press for CBS tape. One, two, three, four. Press feed, press feed, press feed. CBS tape, press feed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Press feed for CBS, press feed for CBS. Check one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Happy, happy. I'll check about the table and then we'll get my feet. Okay, we're, we're ready. Okay, we welcome juniors from left to right, Barry Brown Jr. and Dean Wade, student athletes from Kansas State. We'll have about uh, 15 minutes. Ask you to raise your hand. Let us get the handheld mic to you with questions. Let us know who you are, who you're with, and please direct your question to a specific student athlete. First question right here, second row. Yeah, Matt Hall, Case it Online. Uh, Dean, I'm sure you didn't expect this question today, but how are, how are you doing physically with your, with your foot? Uh, I'm doing good. Um, Gets better every day, so uh, uh, yeah, it's it's doing better. Um, just a game time decision. Third row here to our right, Barry David Smale with the Topeka Capital Journal. Uh, you've shut down some pretty good scores. What do you? What are your plans? If if you're the one guarding Marcus Foster, what do you what do you plan to do with him? Um, we have a, uh, a a good team defense, and um, we have a particular way we're going to uh, try and guard him and contain him and uh, not let him and some of their other scores uh, get loose. So um, it's, it's going to be my, my, my responsibility, but, I mean, my team is going to have my back, and I'm going to have theirs. Gerald, uh, GoBearCat.com. Barry, you look a lot better than the last time we saw you. Uh, how is the eye, and what went through your head as you were laying on the uh, sprint center floor? My eye is pretty good. I, I would say about probably maybe 98%, uh, I guess. So, But, it, I mean, it, it's doing good right now. I can see uh, pretty much 100% almost. Um, when I, I mean, but, but when, I got, when, I, when it happened, I was just uh, kind of in shock. It was, it was kind of just scary just seeing a lot of blood in my eye. Um, and uh, I, was just, I really wanted to get back there on the floor uh, to help my teammates out. But, I mean, ultimately I couldn't, so I just tried to cheer on from the bench. Third row to our right. Dean, you said it's a game time decision, but the fact that it's a lose and go home type situation, 
how likely are you to play? Depends how I feel. Um, I, would, I would love to be out there. Um, this is what, what you dream of as a little kid, being in Mar uh, March Madness, everything like that. And uh, you know, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm itching to get out there, and uh, we'll see what happens. Um, um, but uh, you know, if I can't, I'm going to be the best best cheerleader we got. Um, not not our actual cheerleaders. Our actual cheerleaders are pretty good. But uh, I'm uh, I'll be uh, I'll be on the bench, and I'll be uh, I'll be cheering them on. So to our left. Dean, not playing in Kansas City in that game, uh, talk about how Mac played and how important that was for this team to see him step up into that kind of role. Um, you know, he, he played amazing. Um, had a, was a ton of energy on the floor, um, was very focused, very motivated. Um, he played physically, um, um, but he was, he was also under control the whole time. Um, he was just a technician down there. I mean, they couldn't stop him. And, uh, you know, that, that him playing that well boosts Boost his confidence a uh, ton. And, um, you know, just seeing him fight like that, I think, gives our team um, a little more confidence in him. And, uh, you know, they, they fought they fought hard. Um, that was the best fight I've seen out of him this year. And, uh, you know, we're going to need that in the tournament. So hopefully we keep that rolling. Left aisle. Wyatt Thompson with Kansas State Radio. This question is for Barry. You've played and defended a lot of really good guards in, in the Big 12. Are there any that you think are somewhat similar to what you'll face in the game tomorrow night? Um, I can't even think right now, but I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure it is. Uh, I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a scorer, just like trying to kind of at least score uh, 20 points a game and for, for his team. And so, uh, I mean, I've, I've been watching him a lot um, these past few days since we found out who we're playing. And uh, I know how to kind of know where he wants to pick his spots at, kind of know how he likes to get his shots off now. And, uh, I mean, I'm just going to do my best on them. Joe, right again. For either one of you, the chances that we'll see the two-tone throwbacks tomorrow night? I, I wish. I, I wish. wish. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think, uh, I don't think the NCAA uh, allows it um, in March Madness. So, um, I mean, I, I wish they did, but I don't, I don't think it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. To our left again. Dean, this one for you, Wyatt Thompson with the K-State Radio Network. Of all the things that you've accomplished this year, and in particular in conference play, I'm just curious as to where you feel like your game has grown the most over the course of this conference season. Um, you know, I, I've, I've grown as a player. Um, I think most of it has to do uh, with my maturity uh, mentally um, and just how I approach the game. Um, you know, I just I, every game is a do or die situation in the Big 12, and that's how I, how I thought about it. And um, you know, I just wanted to be aggressive, a little more consistent than I was the past couple of years. And uh, you know, I think that had a lot to do with uh, my teammates just you know keeping me going, um, keeping me uh, keeping my confidence up when I was down. And uh, you know, I think it was just a, a combination of a lot of hard work in the off season. Uh, it's paying off. So. Any other questions? To our left first. For both of you, uh, how important is it for this program to get this win, to get through the round of 64 and kind of get that monkey off the program's back? Uh, it's very important for us. Um, we are um, really trying to uh, not only get into the tournament, which is one of our goals as a team, uh, but win some games in the tournament. And so uh, to get this first one would, would mean a lot for our program, our fans, um, our coaches, and even us as players. Um, so. We made it here last year. Uh, unfortunately, we, we got knocked off in the first round. So hopefully we're, we're ready and uh, a little bit more mature to uh, handle this first round. Dean. I mean, it's, it'd be huge for us. Um, just shows, um, you know, a lot of we were picked low in the Big 12. So, uh, you know, it'd be, it'd be big to come out and prove some people wrong. And, um, you know, so it'd be, it'd be big for our program. Second row to our right. You're not sure on your, your status yet, but assuming perhaps you did play tomorrow, would you have any concern about you know conditioning your rhythm with the team, uh, being away from practice for a little bit? Uh, yeah, I'd be, I'd be pretty concerned with it, but um, you know I just focus on defense. Um, you know I haven't I haven't really been out there um, with them guys um, practicing, keeping that conditioning up. But uh, you know I just focus on defense and doing what I can do, which is defense, uh, playing hard, and uh, I'm rebounding. So to our left again. 
this question's for both of you because it's about both of you. What You two seem to have grown really close as the season gone on. Not that you weren't close before, but there seems to be a real bond, and there's something about being the two guys uh, that has really clicked with you guys. Am I accurate in that, or, or do you really hate each other on, when did you walk <laughs> away from the podium? Uh, I, I think we've grown a little bit closer. Um, just having those talks, trying to uh, rally our guys together um, earlier in the season, trying to uh, uh, bo boost our stock in the, in the, in the Big 12 and uh, ultimately in the, in the seeding for the tournament. Um, we kind of just try to take the team under our wing and uh, be the best players we could be on and off the court, be vocal leaders, and uh, lead by example on and off the court every day in practice, in the weight room, uh, classes, all kind of stuff. And I think that uh, kind of gelled us together, brought us together a little bit. And um, I think the teammates are kind of following our lead. Okay. Um, you know, just to piggyback off what Barry said, I mean, um, we're the older guys. You know, we have a lot of new guys, young guys that haven't really been, uh, been through the the fire, I guess you could say, and uh, I think it kind of took it under, under ourselves to, um, you know, take them under our wing and just uh, really show them through the ways and, um, you know, how to keep, stay focused through the Big 12 season. Other questions? Okay, thank you guys. We'll see you tomorrow night. Start at 4.30 with Coach Weber.
We are about to start with uh, Coach Weber from Kansas State. Questions, please. Uh, we welcome Coach Weber. Please raise your hand and let us get the handheld mic to you. First question on the aisle, middle of the room. Uh, Bruce Blair Kirkhoff with the Kansas City Star. Can you just update us on on Dean Wade's status? How he's doing? Yeah, we, you know, we had him in the boot basically all week. Uh, you know, during practice, he would do uh, treatment and you know some running in the pool, some different things. And and today is probably the first day. Uh, let him do a little bit at it. We went had it. We were in another gym. Just let him get some shooting and moving around. We'll let him shoot this afternoon and and uh, you know just see how he feels. It'd probably be a probably it'd be a game time decision tomorrow. To, uh, you know with him, Barry Barry's fine. Barry's you know he was back in practice on Monday. I don't think he had total 100% vision on Monday Tuesday, but uh, he's back to normal right now. No problem with him at all. All right. Sam Blum from the Daily Progress. Uh, I'm curious. I mean, when, what was your first reaction when you saw that these, uh, you know, this, this draw kind of come out? And obviously, there's Marcus here, and then also Nigel Johnson with the Virginia. I we kind of laughed about it. Um, you know, I, I just, you know, to me, the most important thing we got in the tournament. Uh, you know, my second wish was maybe to, for Dean's sake to play Friday, and you get to play Friday night, so you get a little bit of rest. But, you know, they're, they're, you know, Marcus is a very good player, good offensive player. Um, you know, I'm proud that, you know, we were, our staff found him, help, you know, help with the development. Obviously, he had some, you know, I don't know if you call it setbacks or whatever, some different situations came up. And, you know, he, he's done a great job for Creighton and Coach Mack. And, um, and then Nigel obviously had some, you know, some different things with him. But, uh, you know, we, we can't worry about that. All right now we're worried about is playing Creighton, seeing if we can stop them. And, and one of us. Key players will be obviously Marcus as, as their leading scorer. Riley, Gate, Riley Gates, go paracat.com. Uh, coach, with all the attention on Marcus, not just off the floor, but on it, does a guy like Kyrie Thomas seem like someone who may not be getting enough attention this week? Well, he, I, I said, I think the first day after, um, you know, after we got the selection Sunday night when we had the little uh, media get together, that. Uh, you know, Marcus is very good in scores, but Thomas, you know, overall, all around, he might be a better player. I don't think there's any, you know, he does so much for them. He's a lockdown defender. He's strong. He can post up. He, he, he plays a little bit of point, a little bit of three, two for them. He, he's shooting the three ball well. Um, just, you know, he's a good complement to Marcus and their team, but he he's, he's a good player. There's no doubt about it. And uh, you, you look at the potential draft boards and, and he pops up on there. So, you you know, he must be pretty good if he's there. Yeah, coach, uh, Matt Hall cased it online. D does it make preparation more challenging not knowing if Dean's going to play or not? I mean, as far as putting in sets and how you're going to play, not being aware of whether or not you're going to have him? Well, you know, all week we kind of just prepared without him. So, you you know, we did, you know, we did stuff without him. And I guess it helps because they, they've been playing small ball for the most part. So, you know, kind of when we played Kansas, you know, when I shook hands with Bill, he goes, welcome to 6-5 and under. Um, you know, and it's, it's similar, you know, to, you know, it gives us, if they were big, now we might have a little bit of a, a issue. But, uh, you know, we're, it's going to be tough no matter what. But, uh, you know, we'll, we, we've been dealing with it. Obviously, if Dean's there, it, it gives us a little bit of a, a big guy that can score inside with Mac. Um, hopefully that would give us an advantage. Middle of the room aisle. Roger Rubin from the Fieldhouse. Bruce, just if you could sort of give some insight into how the decision's going to be made with Wade, is, is this going to mostly be about how he feels working out on it, or is it possible that there's a component of this decision that's going to be you throttling back his enthusiasm <laughs> in his own best interest? Well, it, it, the most important thing is his best interest for his future. Obviously, 
Uh, he's one of the better players. He's got a, you know, not only a future with K-State, but hopefully in the NBA. And we, we can't let that, you know, we don't want to harm him where something would happen he couldn't play in the future. So, you know, at, we've, we, we're relying on our team doctors, relying on our trainer. Um, you know, Dean wants to play. He wanted to play against Kansas on, on, on Friday night. And, you know, we just said for, the, for your future and, you know, to have a chance to play this week, uh, we needed to sit him and rest him, and and you know we'll we'll just you know we'll see on his how he feels, and and then you know uh, it, you know talking to the doctors and the trainers, we'll make the final decision. Based on the information that you already have, are you predisposed to leaning one way or another? Oh, I don't. I just you know we've gone without him all week, so we're prepared that way. If he plays, obviously you got one of the best players in the Big Twelve, one of the better power forwards in the country. Uh, it would be a nice addition to us. So we we just got to see what happens, and and uh, you can't always plan. I didn't plan to have Barry Brown only one minute the other night either. So you know you expect the unexpected. You just got to play. To our left, Coach Tim Fitzgerald, GoParacat.com. Sticking with Dean, uh, you've been at this a long time. When you watch Dean Wade play, um, he's not a highlight reel. He's kind of the opposite. He's so fundamentally sound. He's almost is he like almost a coach's dream to work with. Yeah, there's no doubt he's and his improvement from and you guys have seen it that cover us, you know, from day one from high school. The guy, you know, if you saw him in high school, his confidence, his strength, um, he's he's really intelligent as a player. He's so versatile and he does stuff on on both ends of the court. He's one of the better defenders for big guys. He knows ball screen schemes. Uh, he's he's probably one of the best passers for a big guy, and and we I, I we always kind of joke if he was at maybe some other place beside Manhattan, Kansas, I think he'd be getting a lot of more attention nationally, and and I think that'll come in the future. But uh, um, I know you know as the season went on, a lot of NBA calls, a lot of agent calls, all that. So you know he's got a future, and it's been fun to coach him, watch his development, and and the best thing about him is his character. Uh, he wants to win. He's so humble, and uh, it, you know it is a, as you said, kind of a dream come true for a, for a coach. Third row to our right, David Smale, Topeka Capital Journal. At some point, you're going to have a conversation with Marcus, if not before the handshake after the game. Do you have any idea what you might say to him? You know, I'm just happy for him. If you know, if if he's successful and and he's doing things the right way, that's great. And if I had part of that, it's even better. And you know, I. Said it over and over, you know, you, you, you know, if it's my job to help them, help them. There's more than just basketball. There's school, basketball, and there's also life and doing things right. And, uh, you know, if he, you know, he's making progress in all those things and I had something to do with it, that's great. First row to our left. Ryan Black of the Manhattan Mercury. Bruce, I'm just wondering, uh, how, how big are you a proponent of just the fact that, I mean, if, if Wade is only now shooting for the first time this week, I mean, maybe he's been in film sessions and he understands the game plan, but he hasn't actually been out there executing it and practicing it. Does that have anything to do with your decision at all? Just he maybe hasn't had a lot of uh, – Not really, because we've played all year. If this was, you know, game, week two or something, I'd be a little bit hesitant on it. But, you know, and, and what we just talked about, he's so smart, you know, and – he knows where everyone should be, and, and that was our biggest fear against Kansas because he's kind of our, I don't know if you want to call it in football, free safety. He kind of sees it all, and, he, and he's there in the right spots and, and covering up for when guys make mistakes. So, you know, that part I wouldn't have, you know, getting his rhythm, his explosion. Uh, when you, and it's like, you know, and Cam was out three, you know, three, four weeks. When you're out that long and don't play basketball, it takes a little bit of time. But, you know, it, obviously he gives you – you know, a big body, smart, you know, he does so many things for us, he still could help us. I, I really believe that. To our left again. Coach, uh, addressing nobody in particular, um, you had to hit the reset in year three after things happened. You lost seven underclassmen out of that group. Uh, when you went back to do the rebuild, how much did character play into when you looked at guys like Dean and Barry? Because they're high character guys that are accountable and, and hold themselves accountable. Yeah, it, it was very important. That and we talked a lot about getting guys that have won. And if you look at Barry Brown, he took his team to the Final Four. Dean Wade won a bunch of state championships. Kamal won state championships, city championships. Uh, Levi won state championships. So you get guys that, you know, care about winning. And uh, it, it's important. It's 
you know, talent's one thing, and, and it's great, and, and you need talent, but if you can find guys that, uh, that care and, and they want to do things the right way and give you great leadership, it's probably the best thing about our team is the leadership. It's made it so much easier. It definitely helps, and it's something that we did address as, as a staff. Front row left. Uh, Bruce, I know you told us Sunday that when you had that conversation with Cam, uh, you know, when he was shooting, for, when you had been shooting free throws, you just told him to relax and not put pressure on himself. Has he responded the way that you would like to up to this point? I thought he's, you know, the nice thing, we actually had practice this week. He hasn't had practice. You know, when he came back, if you were in the middle of games, you maybe have one practice a week. You got preparation, you got a game, and then you got the day after where you're just kind of going through things and shooting. Uh, so we had, you know, really three three good days of practice. I thought he did he did well. Um, you know, he, I just told him focus on all the little things that can help our team, and you know whether it's getting us into the offense, guarding, um, you know, make if he makes an open shot, that's fine. But uh, you know, it, it think about it. Last year, first game in the NCAA, he had what 24 against Wake. Uh, so he's got experience. He's been through it. Uh, hopefully, all that'll add up. And he'll have it would it would be nice for him to see a smile on his face and and do you know help us get have be successful. Other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you.
We'll be starting in a couple minutes with UMBC, who the student athletes will be Jordan Grant, Jarius Lyles, KJ Mora, and Joe Sherburn. Okay, we are about to start with the student athletes for you from UMBC. Okay, we welcome the student athletes from UMBC. We have from left to right senior Jordan Grant, senior Jarius Lyles, KJ Mora, and junior Joe Sherburn. We'll have 15 minutes. Please raise your hand. We'll get the handheld mics to you. Let us know who you are, who you're with, and if you're asking a question, please uh, address it to a specific student athlete. First question, second row. Uh, Paul Woody, Richmond Times Dispatch. Just a question for Jarius. Uh, I believe you started your career at VCU. Could mm -hmm. you talk about your time there and the move to, and what happened, the moves you made to get, eventually get to UMBC? Uh, yeah, um, I enjoyed my time at VCU. Uh, I played under a great coaching staff at Shaka Smart and uh, Coach Rhodes. Um, it, I learned a lot from them. There was a lot of pros on that team that are currently in the NBA right now. One that plays on this team, uh, Charlotte Hornets, um, Travion Graham. 